Hello friends. Have you noticed an increase, amongst people, rejecting the truth? At some point in time, before we wake up to all the deceptions and gaslight created by narcissists, we were also in denial, some of the time at least. However, as God opened our eyes to see and understand the truth, we establish a commitment to loving the truth no matter how difficult it may be, and how much cognitive dissonance it may cause us. Nowadays, people are refusing to love the truth, because they have already made up their minds, and quickly tell you they are satisfied, and do not care to be bothered. People are being indoctrinated by a narcissist mentality, affecting them to follow what makes them feel good, and not what it is necessary for them to break free from bondage. I encourage you, to be vigilant and sober, and to pursue love of the truth. We are in times of great delusion and deception. Do not need wickedness, and itching ears, kidnap your awakening out of the narcissistic matrix, though Jesus Christ. I'm including two videos, that I hope will bring additional information, for you to be encouraged and blessed by the love of the truth. God bless you. Please, remember. Truth, is freedom. In this session of Look at the Book, we focus on 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-12 for one of the most insightful passages concerning the nature of unbelief and belief. So, Father, I pray that you would help us to escape being among those who are perishing by giving us a love for the truth and a, a hatred of unrighteousness and a profound belief in the gospel. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. There are a lot of things here I'm going to pass over that you have questions about, and we'll come back to this another time, perhaps. The coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, perhaps look back at verse 3, look at Daniel um, 7, 25, 8, 25, um, passages in Revelation 13, but I'm not going to focus on this. I have something else I want to focus on. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power, not all power in the universe, but all that he has. His full force is coming against uh, the church. All power with false signs and wonders. I don't think false here means fake, like this is done with smoke and mirrors. I think it means deceptive that these are real signs and wonders, but they lead to falsehood. False signs and wonders with all wicked deception for those who are perishing. Now, this is what I want to focus on. Why are people perishing in this passage? What, what do you have to do to perish, and what could you do not to perish? That's what's so crucial here. So let's summarize, or let, let's circle the, the reasons people are perishing, who are perishing because... They refused to love the truth and so be saved. So by loving the truth, you are saved. Not just by believing the truth, but by loving the truth, we are saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion. So because of their lack of love for the truth and their buying into the deception and the falsehood of Satan, God is handing them over. This is God's judgment beginning already in this life. He hands them over to a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false. So this is number one, why they're perishing. This is number two. They believe what is false in order that they may be condemned. So God is handing them over to a delusion and to condemnation who did not believe the truth. This is number three for why they're perishing. But they had pleasure in unrighteousness. There's number four. And what I want us to do is ask, what's the connection between these? How, how are they related to, to each other. They refuse to love the truth. They uh, believed what is false. So here you have believing and here you have loving. And they did not believe the truth, but they had pleasure in unrighteousness. 
Now notice, seems to me we get at this by this noticing this contrast here. The, the contrast is between believing, or let's say not, not believing. Here's the not back here. Not believing the truth and having pleasure in unrighteousness. So evidently, what, what keeps us from believing truth is not lack of facts or lack of light, but rather because we have a, a pleasure in unrighteousness which the truth ex, ex, um, exposes. Jesus said in uh, John 3.19, the light has come into the darkness and people loved darkness, darkness rather than light, and therefore they wouldn't come to the truth. They wouldn't come to the light. So that the underneath unbelief, not believing, is a, a love, a delight, which connects back now to this word here. They refused, or they did not receive, literally, a love for the truth. The, the deepest problem of unbelief is not the inability to affirm facts or the lack of awareness. The deepest problem in the world is that fallen human beings do not love truth. We are not people of the truth. We love what will serve our fallen appetites, and that is this unrighteousness here. So when we ask the question, how can I avoid perishing? Or how can I help other people not perish? Our energies don't just go towards trying to multiply facts or fix their intellectual problem. That, that has to be done because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of, of the gospel, the word of truth, the word of Christ. But we need to pour enormous energy for ourselves and others into praying against this. Namely, our hearts find pleasure in sin. And as long as our hearts are finding superior pleasure in sin, we will not be able to believe the truth that exposes this sin. We will find every imaginable reason why this truth cannot be because this truth is going to ruin my love affair with unrighteousness. It might be worth your looking at 1 Corinthians 13, 6, where Paul says, um, let's put it in red, love does not rejoice in, and then the word is exactly the same as this word here, unrighteousness, Love does not rejoice, but in truth, in the truth. And isn't it remarkable that, that the contrast is between not unrighteousness and righteousness or truth and falsehood. It's between unrighteousness and truth, just the same way it is here. Here is a love affair with unrighteousness, and here is a failure to love the truth. So th the love that God gives us, a love for him and love for people is, is a love that includes a rejoicing, which ties in right here to this pleasure, a rejoicing in the truth, which is what would enable us then to believe the truth. So go deep, go deep in your soul and find out the real obstacles to unbelief. And you will find that they are always deeper than facts deeper than the lack of light, they are a love of darkness. Hell is the most hated truth in the world. It's hated most by backslidden theologians and preachers or liberal. They hate the message on hell. They wail and gnash their teeth against the very idea of an eternal hell, especially if there's wrath and terror and literal fire. But you see, they say that hell is not compatible with the love of Jesus Christ. And human nature recoils at the very thought of eternal damnation. 
everlasting torments, weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. And so this truth, from the very first time it's been preached to this last day, and more so now than ever, the message on hell's been ridiculed, it's been softened, it's discounted. Every effort's made to explain it away. Yet God is not ashamed to declare His wrath against sin. My Bible is full of the fact that God, being a holy God, is also a wrathful God against sin. The Bible is full of warnings concerning the wrath of God. David preached the wrath of God. He said, Your hand, O God, shall find out all your enemies. Your right hand shall find out those who hate you. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of your wrath and anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in His wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Jeremiah preached the judgment wrath of God. He said, but the Lord is the true God. He's the living God. He's the everlasting King. At His wrath the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to endure His indignation. No one's going to stand when He moves in His anger and wrath against sin. Is that in your Bible, friends? And how is it that ministers would say that God has no wrath in Him? Hell is the fullest expression of God's wrath against sin and unrighteousness. It's the full expression of God's hatred towards sin. It was prepared originally for the devil and his angels. God has created a hell of torment, indignation for his wrath. You say, how could a loving Jesus create a hell so horrible it's beyond imagination, where his full wrath for eternity is going to be spent on the ungodly and the sinful? Jesus warned about this over and over again. He preached it to his friends. He's talking to his disciples. Listen to what he said. And I say unto you, my friends, do not be afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more power in what they can do. But I'll tell you who you shall fear. Fear him which after he's killed the body has power to cast you into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Who said that? Jesus said that. He preached it to his friends. He preached it to those who were saved. What is hell like? What is hell going to be like? Hell is a kingdom of darkness, literally and spiritually. Now remember, in God's kingdom, there's not going to be the need of sun or moon or stars because Jesus, the Lamb, will be the light. The city had no need of the sun, neither the moon, to shine. For the glory of the Lord did light it up, and the Lamb is the light thereof. The only light that we have in glory is the brilliance of His nature and His holiness that's going to shine throughout the new world that He creates. But there is a hell that is internal darkness. It's going to be a tormenting darkness, so suffocating. It's going to be a darkness created by God. It's a darkness we don't understand. Jesus warned, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is a darkness so suffocating can be felt. It's going to be a darkness that causes pain. There's also spiritual darkness. This outer darkness describes being cast further and further away from God. There's going to be ever-increasing spiritual darkness. Now, the Bible calls hell a lake of fire. Now, hell is more than just being forsaken by God or abandoned. Hell is punishment. It's not just a prison. It's punishment. It's vengeance. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that don't, do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished, 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 with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Jude said, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Suffering the vengeance. How long will God hate sin? As long as He's God. He cannot stop hating sin into eternity because that's His nature. He'll hate sin all through eternity. There'll be a hell as long as God hates sin. It's never ending. Never, never ending. Hell is a place of rage and hatred toward God. They're going to rage against the cross because it was the only way out and the only way of salvation, the only door, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ at the cross. Who's going to hell? If you find yourself in this list, oh, God, put his holy fear in your heart. Bring you to repentance tonight. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Who's going to hell? Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And the Bible said only those written in the Lamb's book of life will be saved. If you really believe what I'm preaching tonight, there's no way on this earth 
that you could sit for hours in front of a television set without getting into a secret closet and weeping for your children, your unsaved loved ones? If you believe what I'm preaching, that there's eternal hell, why are you so wrapped up in the things of this world? Why aren't we weeping and praying for unsaved loved ones? Why? And why aren't we rejoicing more about being pulled as a brand right out of the burning? Jesus, send the Holy Ghost mightily right now, quietly. Deal with us now. Reach out, Holy Spirit, now all of this congregation. Bring in the backslider. Bring in those that are cold of heart. Bring in those that are drifting. Bring them home, Jesus.